we have a, a very a very special guest. Um, we're so honored, as uh, Minister Sani had said, to have the media here. And this next gentleman uh, probably doesn't need much of an introduction, but uh, we're going to hear next from uh, Rishi Nagar from Red FM in Calgary. And uh, Rishi has his master's degree in English literature and was the youngest person in India to be a principal of a college in India. And that's where he found his passion for journalism. Please join me in welcoming Rishi Nagar. Thank you. Why Guruji ka khalsa, why Guruji ki fateh. I would like to thank Honorable Leela Ahir, the Minister of Culture, Multiculturalism and Status of Women, Honorable Rajan Sani, the Minister of Community and Social Services, for giving me an opportunity to participate in this event and the UCP government of Alberta for hosting this commemoration of Guru Nanak Dev Ji's 550th birth anniversary today. Honorable ministers, the MLAs, the MPs, the dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. As a radio host and a humble disciple, I feel humbled by the Guru's hukam, the advice on how we should use our intellects the Guru says, if we do not use our intelligence on to unravel the secrets of God, we are, and I quote, real donkeys braying with undeserved pride, unquote. Nanak te nar asal khar je ben gur, je ben gun garb karant. It's 1411 Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Since I am speaking about the Guru, who constantly, rigorously and emphatically spoke of the oneness of God, I hope what I say will be somewhat less prideful braying, but ultimately and surely still by a donkey. From the message that Guru Nanak Ji preached over 500 years ago, it has now sprung into a cohesive and powerful religion which still retains diversity within and contributes to the well-being of society. For most of the followers, their religion is a journey on this earth with provide, which provides them with an opportunity to achieve liberation and connection with God through high moral conduct active service and truthful and righteous living. Three things in Guru Nanak Dev Ji's life are very important. First, his emphasis on gender equality. As my friend Avneet just said, Guru Nanak Ji wanted men and women to be treated equally and his message as she, she just mentioned. And I quote, So kyo manda akhiya, jit jamera jaan, why call a woman bad? From her, the kings are born. Today, atrocities against women, the minorities, and the weak are on the increase. It is therefore necessary to take the Guru's message to all nooks and corners of the world, to emphasize the need for paying adequate attention to the well-being of our women and children, the weak and the minorities. Guruji laid emphasis on the protection of the environment, Avneet also mentioned these three things, water, air, and Mother Earth. We end Japuji Sahib, the prayer composed by the Guru, with a reference to the need to protect environment and challenges to live in harmony with nature when Guru says, and I quote, Pavan Guru, Pani Pita, Mata, Tarat, Mahat. Air is the Guru, the teacher. Water is the father. Earth is the great mother to of, mother of all. He clearly conveys his message. Thirdly and lastly, but not the least, the Guru emphasized the need for interfaith harmony and sustained dialogue among religions and religious communities. He traveled the far-fetched far lands of the world to promote the culture of dialogue. Kich sahi hai, kich kahi hai, kich suni hai. His message of perseverance, 
tolerance, brotherhood is of utmost value today. His message is all religions have merit and it is necessary to learn from each other to ensure harmonious living. This message of Guru Nanak is as relevant even today as it used to be when he lived. Guru Nanak Ji stressed upon God and uh, the affinities in his teachings to the Islam have led some scholars to characterize Sikhism as monotheistic. However, Guru Nanak Ji's monotheism is certainly less conventional and more like the non-dual monotheism expressed by the mystics of those traditions, those times. A mystic is the person who seeks a direct personal connection to the divine. Non-dualism implies that reality in its absolute nature is indivisible, non-to, do nahi. The very ideas of me and you, me and the world, me and God, the Sikhs and the Hindus, the Hindus and the Muslims, the Sikhs and the Christians, and so on, are precisely that ideas that divide the seamless whole of the reality into conceptual fragments sometimes come with undesirable consequences. When we start looking at people as they are different from what I am, or I am different from you, the rain of problems start pouring in. The Guru Granth Sahib, the scripture itself begins with non-duality, with ekonkar. There is one God. Consider the words of Nanak from Rag Maru. And I quote, How mein kari ta tu nahi, tu ho vai, how nai. 1093 page Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Where self exists, God does not. And where God does, the self cannot exist. Clearly, the God, the Vaheguru, the wonderful teacher, is the ultimate reality. In the words of Dr. Hilary Rodriguez, he is a professor of Sikhism at University of Lethbridge, and I quote his words, the mysterious nature of the individual soul of self and the wondrous diversity of the creation dissolve in full apprehension of the divine Godhead. Sikhism blends the transcendent nature of reality, that is nirgun, which is beyond all distinctions and attributes with its immanent nature, its sargun aspect, which is replete with creative diversity. The one is mysteriously blended with the many." Unquote. According to a tradition, when Guru Nanak Ji emerged from the Kali Bain, a small river, a river in Sultanpur, after his divine realization at the age of 30, he was asked with religious tradition which religious tradition he would follow. He said, na Hindu, na Musliman. There is no Muslim, there is no Hindu. This comment has been analyzed in numerous ways, such as a dismissal of the Hinduism and the Islam as the beginning of a new religious tradition, which is the development of the Sikhism. Dr. Rodriguez says, and I quote, however, one may just as readily see the comment as Nanak's rejection of all religious traditions and forms in a non-dual realization that subsumes everything into it, into one God." Unquote. He is succinctly expressed it when he rejected caste distinctions. Har eko karta, ek eko diban har, har ek se da hai amar, eko har chet tar, at page 83 of Sri Guru Granth Sahib. For all humanity, there is but a single refuge. In Sikhism, God is perceived as infinite and ajuni, beyond birth and death. Thus God came, thus God cannot die to be reincarnated or assume any human form. Briefly, 
God for the Sikhs as described in the Mool Mantra. The first passage in the Guru Granth Sahib and the basic formula of the faith is Ikumkar, Satnam, Karta Purukh, Nirpo, Nirvair, Akal Murat, Ajuni, Sabhang, Guru Prasad. The one supreme being, the immutable and eternal name, the creator being, fearless, without enmity, the timeless verity, the unincarnated and self-existent is known through His grace. Thus, Guru Nanak's concept of Ekankar brings all human beings under one umbrella. The flora and the fauna, the human beings, the weathers, the rivers, the mountains, the sun, the moon, the galaxies, the cosmos are nothing but the manifestations of one single God. Thus Guru Nanak brought the universe and its everything, you and I, so near to each other that they can never be separated. Ek pita, ek aske hambarik, from the one father are all we born. Thank you very much.